Welcome to the Pre-Snap Podcast, presented by Thrive Fantasy. Here's your host, Casey Bubba and Scott Bodman. Scott Bogman! <laughs> and with that, we welcome you back to the pre-snap podcast brought to you by the wonderful people at Line Star Sports. Make sure you check them out on Twitter at Line Star App and at Line Star NFL. Hope you guys had a great week three. As usual, it was bonkers. Like when you think you know something, oh. you don't know Jack. It was tons and tons of fun. And trust me, when we recap it, we'll tell you all about it. First, you can find me on Twitter at Pediatric and my co-host, as always, who had a great Sunday of football. Trust me, on Twitter at Bogman Sports. Scott Bogman, how we doing, man? Yeah, uh, not so great. Uh, my Steelers just got trounced by the Bengals, but uh, at least I heard about it on Twitter, too. So that's great. But, uh, you know, it's just the way she goes when you play a division rival. Hey, I, at least I didn't send you one this time. I, I left the Twitter out of it. I, I was nice enough about that. And hey, you had a big Longhorn Saturday. So you got that going that, for you. That I did. 70 points for Longhorns was fun yeah. to watch. Yeah, that was good. Before we get into your week three recap, I wanted to remind you guys of this wonderful podcast, the Pre-Snap Podcast, is sponsored by Thrive Fantasy. Go to thrivefantasy.com or download the app, and you'll check out its cool prop betting system. It's uh, each tournament, as I say they are, they have cash games too. There's 20 prop bets. You pick 10 of them, an over or an under, and you get points. Like if it's a favorite, you might get less points. If it's a, a long shot, you'll get more points. If you go goal, get as much right and get as many points and you go higher up the standings, win some more cash. If you are new to Thrive Fantasy, use promo code LINESTAR when you sign up, L-I-N-E-S-T-A-R, and they up the ante, folks, if you want to check this out. You now get a first-time deposit match up to $250 instead of $100. So if you deposit anywhere from $5 to $250, they'll match it. So check that out. Also... Instead of two months of Line Star Premium, you now get three. So we're just upping all this stuff for you. Nice. And you'll have to check in, but it should count for this week. If it doesn't, at Thrive Fantasy on Twitter, free fifty thousand dollar NFL contest ticket for their promo for this week. So check that out. Nice. If it's not, I will change that and we'll fix it for the next show. But that's what I have right now. So you get up to two fifty now instead of hundred. You get three months instead of two and a free ticket into their biggest Sunday tournament they offer. I don't know what you're waiting for. Check it out. If you like free money, they're basically giving you free money. So check that out. Enjoy it and have some fun. All right, Bogman. Week three recap. Let's get Boogaloo in here. Thursday Night Football, Panthers, Texans. Beautiful game. Panthers just dominated 24 to 9. They didn't have to do too much because, uh, yeah, it was it was a rough one for, for um, you know, Davis Mills. And everything involved, but I guess Sam Darnold still looked pretty good. And I guess I buried the headline. CMC. Yeah. R.I.P. That, R. I. P. That's unfortunate. Well, they're not sticking him on IR. I swear, dude, I could have swore I saw something that said uh four to six weeks for him. That's but what I thought too. It, it's and I think that's what a usual uh, you know, whatever grade. I can't remember if it's a grade one or grade three is bad. I always forget. I'm not a doctor, obviously. So uh, but it, it, you could see it through his pants. I know that's not good. We could see Kevin Durant's, you know, uh Achilles tear, uh, that kind of stuff. So it's never good when you can see those things happen, but um you know, uh, hopefully it's just three weeks. You're not going to put them on the IR, so keep your fingers crossed. But I tell you what, uh, I think a couple things we took out of this game is, number one, Brandon Cook's still the only Texan you can own. So uh, running game's a mess. Davis Mills just isn't there there yet. He did some nice things, uh, but couldn't put up points. So uh, in Carolina, you know, uh, obviously – uh, I think uh, we're, we're going to want to go after Chuba Hubbard here. Going to be the number one waiver wire uh, guy this week because he's replacing uh, CMC. And when they gave it to Mike Davis last year, they just went to Mike Davis in the same type of 30 touches that they did with Christian McCaffrey. If only so, the Falcons would do that. Yes. Uh, oh, don't get to that eventually. Yeah, we'll get we to will. that. But yes. uh, another big thing here is they traded their starting tight end, Dan Arnold, for C.J. Henderson when J.C. Horn went out. And I think Tommy Tremble is yes. uh, a guy that you're going to be able to look at in deeper leagues, third round uh, tight end at a Notre Dame. I uh, scored a touchdown in this one on a running play, got a little bit more involved in the passing game. So uh, I think he's a guy that uh, you're going to want to look at in deeper leagues, not in your standard 12, man. Yeah, we joked about that on the radio show that they made a point to physically say Tommy Trimble, the first time he touched the ball in a professional football game, scored a touchdown. 
That right. was like the full thing. So he, he was talented at Notre Dame. So I wouldn't be shocked if he gets a little roller. They wanted to keep um, up in what was already a really good defense. They had confidence in the kid, it sounds like, if they're trading Dan, or, Dan Arnold. Not worth a bad a bad look. I, I can't wait to see the Chuba Hubbard bids. We'll talk about that in the fact. We don't have to end. hear Sam Darnold to Dan Arnold because that was kind of tough, uh, especially yeah. for the guys in the booth. So yeah, a couple <laughs> of drinks and it gets a little tricky. Um, <laughs> let's head to Sunday for you now. Colts, Titans, AFC South battle. Titans win twenty five to sixteen. Uh, neither team really looked great. Julio Jones was mysteriously not involved uh, late in the game, and they said he's not hurt. Um, AJ Brown left hurt, so that's a bit of concern. Derrick Henry still a monster on the ground and through the air, uh, and the Colts just look bad right now with their whole situation. And they lost Quentin Nelson, looks like for a while. So right, not going to get any better. They call Quentin Nelson day to day today. Goodness. So uh, I mean, yeah, I'm day to day too when my <laughs> alarm clock goes off. We'll see. <laughs> well, I mean, that's just for living, not for playing. But uh, <laughs> I'm with you on that. By the way, I, I think what happened here with Julio, <clears throat> and this is why I'm not bothered by it. Is that they were up so much, and Nick Westbrook, I keen, I don't know, it's just Nick Westbrook in Indiana, but uh, Nick Nick Westbrook is a better blocking wideout, and you're not going to, you know, take Julio and make him block for Derrick Henry for most of this game. So why not have Nick Westbrook do it? Which you know led to him seeing four targets and scoring a touchdown and catching all of them, by the way. So uh, if AJ Brown's going to miss some time, which I believe they're calling him week to week right now, yeah, um, then Nick Westbrook once again in a deeper league uh, could be a pickup not much use to us here with the Colts man I'm just frustrated that you know you know that Carson Wentz is down and you give the ball to Jonathan Taylor uh 11 times I I don't know why you would do that it was nice to see Pittman get peppered with targets and all that stuff but Hines is still you know Hines is out pointing Taylor right now yep. and, and that is just absurd you know I like Naheem Hines I do and he should have a role but Jonathan Taylor should be getting the ball at least 20 times a game. This is uh, not good coaching right now. Especially facing a uh, Titans defense as we're getting shredded by the running back so far this year. It's like this could have been Jonathan Taylor's game, and they just totally fugazi that one. So yeah. uh, that was not good at all. It's going to be interesting to see where the Colts go from here. At, at worst, the end season hard knocks should be a blast. So we'll, <laughs> yes. we'll, they picked, you know, I think they picked the Colts. Go, man, they got, they're going to be AFC South favorites. They got to be at least pretty good contenders here. Oops. So oops. yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun there. Um, Falcons at the Giants. This was another oops game. On paper, it looks like two bad teams that should score a lot of points. Well, two bad teams didn't score any points. This was very, very disappointing. Falcons leave with the W, 17-14. Danny Dimes, I thought, still looked good, but not great. They lost Sterling Shepard. That didn't help. They lost uh, Darius Slayton. That didn't help, obviously. Your boy, Saquon, came back in a big, big way, which was good to see. And you mentioned it. it the workload kept increasing, so I think we're good there. Falcons, I still hate Cordero Patterson. I guess it's ridiculous. It should not have happened. Like, Mike Davis is good. Use him. Other than that, the floor is yours. I think it might be time to like Cordell Patterson. Well, you know, yeah, you have to now. That's what I'm angry about. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, six uh, catches on seven targets, 82 yards, and seven rushes for 20 yards. That's over 100 yards. He didn't get in the end zone this week, but if he's going to be putting up 100 yards a week. It, it's just, is he going to get in the end zone? He seems to be that, you know, number two, and he's it, it, it's annoying because I feel like he's taking away from everyone we like to value. Yeah. You know, Calvin Pitts Ridley was expensive. Too. Uh, yeah, but uh, Gage, Pitts, and Davis are all getting stuff taken away by Cordell Patterson. So uh, I think the word is fade those guys and pump Patterson up a little bit. Hopefully that is enough uh, praising him to get him out of the game next week. But we'll see. So, so. Um, pray for everybody. Right. Uh, Shepard and Slayton being down hurts. Luckily, Ingram came back. So he saw uh, six targets did lose a fumble, uh, which is super frustrating. But it could make uh, Colin Johnson, who saw seven uh, targets yep. of, of value, and the rookie Kadarius Tony saw a ton of snaps. So if those guys both miss next week, uh, those guys could be, you know, once again, bigger league or DFS plays. But uh, just be more involved for next week. Yeah, they could be very fun DFS plays value wise, which you'll hear on the Friday edition of the Pre Snap Podcast when we preview the week four slate for you. But some nice value there. And Johnson, we saw at times last year, leaving Jacksonville. That was uh, mm -hmm. he was serviceable towards the end of the season, like streaming from time to time. So he's a good fit there. Obviously, Galladay was back, but he still looks kind of broken. So we'll see see how that comes along. Chargers Chiefs. I'll be honest. I was golfing Sunday morning, and this <laughs> this started out very slow, and I'm like, this is not what we wanted it to be. 
well, it ended like we wanted it to be. The Chargers leave victoriously 30 to 24, and Boggs, they kind of were in charge of this game the entire time. Like this yeah. was it was pretty impressive. Herbert looked like the better quarterback. Mahomes had two picks. Uh Tyree Kill is still absent. Uh, Kelsey feasted. Hardman had another nice game. But Mike Williams is an absolute monster. Eckler's a beast. Allen did his thing. This Chargers team, which we picked as the sneaky dark horse in the AFC, we both did. Yeah. They're, they're make, I know it's week three, so I'm not victory lapping this, but I'm feeling pretty good about the situation right now because they've looked very good. Right. I mean, I think really the thing you have to worry about with the Chargers is uh, injuries adding up. It seems yeah. to happen to them every single year. And uh, Bosa got a little dinged up in this game. Uh, Derwin, too. Uh, so just pay attention to that. But, I mean, this might be the absolute breakout year for Mike Williams. Remember, super high pick in the NFL draft uh, has disappointed for the most part. He's had an okay season, um, but uh, I mean, he is putting up first round wide receiver numbers now. I mean, seven for one twenty two and two here. Uh, just been great. Um, uh, Eckler remains the man. It doesn't matter if he's getting it through the air on the ground. He's getting it and scored in this game. Um, on the Chiefs side, I was really happy to see Clyde Edwards Alaire. Uh, get going. He even fumbled early, so I went, oh, God, is this going to be a, you know, uh, they're going to yank him, but they went back to him and showed him some confidence, unlike Ronald Jones in Tampa Bay. So, but it's still the Kelsey and Tyreek show, maybe the Josh Gordon show coming soon here, but uh, obviously that is a joke, but um, yeah, I mean, this turned into a offensive explosion, but um, you know, still didn't hit the over because I think it was 55, wasn't it? Yeah, they missed it. Yep. I mean, this this is classic Kansas City from last year. Yep. So uh, it, I guess at least they played a little better on defense, but they still ended up losing this game. And uh, Andy Reid's OK, too, by the way. Yes, so. Andy Reid is OK. Chiefs 0-3 against the spread this year. Yes, Ugh, it's, it's, yeah. it's pretty, yeah, two losses to boot. But um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. I'm still not a full on believer in CEH. Great game, though. I'm not going to deny that at all. He played great. I just need to see it more than once, like every three or four games to, to fully buy in. But he looked good. Looked very, very good. Bengals, Steelers. Bengals win 24 to 10. Um, Burrow looked very, very efficient with his three touchdown passes. Jamar Chase got his, got got his twice. Tyler Boyd looked great with T. Higgins out. Like they both, they both feasted very, very nicely. Um, the Steelers, yeah, about that. Uh, yeah, it's not good. So uh obviously Deontay went out. Juju also went out with a rib injury. So Claypool got peppered with targets, but I mean, worse than that, I mean, uh, better if you're yeah, obviously you rostered Najee and he had 14 catches on in 19 PPR targets <laughs> and 102 yards. He set the Steelers franchise record for receptions by a running back in this game. Uh, Jalen Samuels had 13 a couple of years back, but um, you know, obviously he's going to be huge. He did look completely gassed at the end of the game. So he dropped a couple passes too. Um, but if Juju's going to miss, uh, I would bump up James Washington a little bit this week because they should be playing comeback against Green Bay for most of the game as well. Um, Claypool obviously gets a nice bump, and I think Pat Freermuth will get a bump as yeah. well, uh, just playing playing better than Ebron uh, so far. On the Bengals side, I mean, Mixon just continues to get a bunch of, of touches. Jamar Chase already has, you know, he set a goal of 1,000 yards and 10 touchdowns. Uh, he already has four through yep. week three. So he is doing really well there. Uh, Boyd was fine. Um, and, you know, Burrow just didn't have to pass the ball that much because they were in control of most of this game. So he had, that's why he had 18 passes and Ben had 58 through the ball, literally 40 more times. So it's Roethlisberger crazy. might be a, a sneaky DFS play just because I know he doesn't volume, look good. Volume alone. Yeah. 58 passes. He had 318 yards and a touchdown. So uh, like you said, he's going to get volume. Yep, we'll see how that one goes on Sunday. Be a fun one there. Bears at the Browns. Browns win 26 to 6. They didn't have to do much because the Bears are bad. Like Justin Fields looked bad. I think some of it's the game plan wasn't great. Uh, there was just a rookie getting rookied. Browns defense isn't horrible. Um, other than that, though, it was kind of a, a simple game for the most part for me. Not like OBJ looked good in his first game back. I didn't have a ton of takeaways here besides the Bears are in big trouble to me. Yeah, I mean, uh... I thought it was going to be much better than this, but um, in Matt Nagy adding to, you know, um, we don't know who the starter is going to be. They're all in play is just completely eye rolling. Like if Nick Foles was in play, then why didn't he start this game? Why would you go to your rookie when he isn't ready? If Nick Foles is in play, especially going into the dog pound, like, come on. 
I just don't get it. So, uh, yeah, Justin Fields looked rough, uh, and it stopped the entire offense. You know, uh, they had one net net passing yard because he threw for 68 yards and had 67 uh, net yards loss in sacks. So, uh, Robinson led in targets. I guess that's positive. Six for two and 27. He's made some loser quarterbacks look really good. So, hopefully, uh, he can get back on track. Will be a nice contrarian play this week. Uh, just because no one will have confidence in him. You know, uh, Kareem Hunt had a huge game, but they just they went to him late because they were up by so much, so they kind of sat on their lead. Uh, Odell looked healthy too, which is nice. And, uh, you know, we saw Hooper have the touchdown. It's kind of a crapshoot between him and Njoku. I, I, I don't know who I'd want on a week-to-week basis, but Hooper got the red zone look and the touchdown, so he would be the guy for now. For now, yeah. But it'll be interesting to see where they go in a competitive game going forward. Ravens, Lions, Tucker is an absolute legend. That's all I have to say. He was already great before Sunday, but the Ravens got gifted a non delay game call. Like I was watching the red zone and I'm like, wait a minute, that what like did I miss something there? And they just let the game go. And they that got that clock first down. doesn't always match I know, up, I know, you know, but it looked real like it wasn't just like a few like milliseconds, it was like sitting I know. there for a while. It looked bad on TV, but then watching the kick, I think I wasn't the only one that thought he missed it. Like the way it bounced, like that was short type. I thing. just couldn't tell. So when yeah. I'm watching it live, it I, saw, I saw it hit the crossbar. I was like, which way did it go? And I saw it hit the net. And, you know, every Lions fan doing surrender Cobra yeah. at the end of the game, just this number right here that all dudes do when they're, yep. their team is losing. But um, yeah, that was, I mean, any, he, he finished them off with a 61 yarder the last time they played. That's just. Tucker's just a That's beast, brutal. an absolute beast, like 66 yards, set the record legend legend. I'm over um, here feeling bad for myself after watching the Steelers and then just, you know, I'm glad I'm not a Lions fan. You know? Yeah, like the Lions played pretty decent. They played OK this season better than I thought they were their own three. They've been they in sh- every game. They should they should have won this game. Like it, <laughs> that was a tough one. Really tough. Pill. Jared Goff has been good. Not great, but he's been good. I'll give him that much. Um, but overall, it was it's another tough, tough loss. And they didn't go to Quentin Cephas at all, which shocked me. And then the Ravens, Hollywood Brown, this game shouldn't even been close if Hollywood Brown can catch football. Good Lord, dude. I mean, so you just, I feel like you got to go back to him because he's getting open. And oh, I'll keep rostering him. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 100%. The, the tough thing with, with Marquise is you saw him. He was wide open. He was torchable. So, uh, you know, big, huge drops that almost cost him this game. But, uh, you know, I, uh, I think you got to go back to him because he is getting wide open. On the other hand, this Khalif Raymond getting 10 targets confuses me because Cephas looked like the best wide receiver, but Raymond was open in this game. So I'm kind of torn on where to go. I don't know if you can really roster anyone outside of Swift or Williams uh, from and the Hawk, Lions. And Hawk point. struggled too. Hawkins. Yeah. Hawk was tough too. It, he's usually expensive. So, yeah. uh, but, but I mean, when you don't have good wide receivers, they're going to bracket him every single That's time. True. Swift was awesome, though. I'm with you there. Swift was yeah, awesome. Swift is awesome. Yeah. yeah. All right. Saints, Patriots. Talk about my shocked face. It was it was awesome. Saints win 28-13. Jameis did Jameis things. He even gets scolded for one of his touchdown passes because pure Jameis fashion. Just throw it up and pray. Um, that was a they, gift from God, he said. Yeah, I love that. Was that. Amazing. Jameis is amazing. He is a meme factory. Yes, he's the best. But the Patriots lose. Uh, Mac Jones looked like a rookie quarterback this week. And we'll see where it goes from there. Most importantly to me in this game, uh, James White messed uh, messed up hip, and that could be a big thing for Ma- Ramondre Stevenson going forward, potentially. It could be, but it also could be a big thing for J.J. Taylor. Taylor. Yeah. So, uh, but honestly, let's not look at the run game this week when they were down. I mean, Mac Jones yeah. threw yep. the ball 51 times. Just all teams are getting out of running rhythm if they get down. They just abandon it, and that's exactly what happened in New England. Uh, Damian Harris had six rushes. You know, James White had one rush and no targets. He did get hurt, but JJ Taylor had one and two targets. So um, they completely abandoned that. But that's why, you know, Myers had 14 targets. Kendrick Bourne is clearly the two, eight uh, targets, six catches, 96 yards, and a touchdown. Henry and Smith, I think, have got to get more involved. They got to be more of a blanket for Mac Jones. So I'd expect to see them take at least a little bit of a bigger role this week on the New Orleans side. This is what you do, Indianapolis. Watch what New Orleans did. You give the ball to your best player 25, 27 times. That's exactly what they did with Kamara. Gave, gave him the ball 27 times and, you know, got lucky on that uh, that um, touchdown to Callaway and had a, a lucky bounce pick six. So, you know, 
sometimes better be lucky than good, but uh, New Orleans not looking great on offense outside of Camara. No, oh, no, it's still a rough go there. And Taysom Hill even had a rushing touchdown. So yeah. keep an eye on all that fun. Cardinals at the Jags. Cardinals got the 12 point W, 31 to 19, but it it never felt comfortable for me for most of the game. <laughs> it was it was weird watching it because Kyler didn't even throw for a touchdown. He ran for one. He played well, don't get me wrong. Um Connor had two goal line touchdowns that what you expect from Connor to take it away from Edmonds. But Hopkins still Are you trying to tell me it? you didn't expect the Byron Murphy pick six? No, right. the pick six, or you mean the kick six? And the kick six, the uh, kick attempt six to 68 yarder, yeah, with not Justin Tucker. All with right, Crater. well, know. Crater had the record at 64. It's fair in it's Denver. Fair. Come on, oh, you know, it's oh okay, it's okay. different. Uh, so, so Arenado that could might have actually Denver. been yeah. in, in Detroit. Uh, I think it was in Detroit, remember. Dome, Dome Stadium. Yeah. So, humidity in Florida, bad idea, guys. Bad idea, yeah. Come but, on, uh, come on, don't, don't you know anything about drag? Come on. Yes, exactly. 31 I mean, that's just a Cliff though. Kingsbury decision that was bad. You know, I respect uh, it though. Time was expiring. You should have had better coverage. That was a dumb part of it. Like, give it a try. True. What do you do? Throw a Hail Mary and get a pick? Who cares? I, I will say this Jamal Agnew, one of the best kick returns in the NFL. Yep. So, you yep. know, uh, and I think that's his second this year. But uh, look, I, I don't know that there's much to pull from this outside of Kirk is a dude. Uh, yes. I didn't want to give him his credit or his due, and he looks great. Um, Connor is clearly the goal line back. So, uh, we have that down and James Robinson just getting used way over Clyde Edwards, a lair. Thank you. And I know Hyde had, uh, you know, average 5.5 yards per carry, but when you're down by a bunch of points, most defenses don't expect you to run. So when you're running against three, four man fronts, it's not surprised you're ripping off some big gains there. Um, Marvin Jones, top, uh, target getter again for the Jaguars, which is nice. Shark got in the end zone. And LaVisca's third, which is kind of how we saw it playing out. And Trevor yeah. Lawrence still bad. Yeah, uh, Robinson and and Jones still doing fun fantasy things, so I'm there for that. And I told people in my chats on Sunday morning, play Kirk over more. Like, oh, but more. I'm like, everyone's going to say, oh, because more. Play Kirk, please. Like, just do <laughs> it. Just, just understand how this philosophy works. And it might change again in the future, but Kirk's the dude. Like you said, there's a rapport there. Let's keep running with that for a little bit longer. Washington. Buffalo, I'd say Buffalo looks a lot better after week one, Boggs. 43-21, domination. Kyle Allen, five total touchdowns. Emmanuel Sanders looked phenomenal. They got him for a reason. Bang goes the dynamite. Um, this is just a, a pure beatdown. That's the best I can say. Boom goes the dynamite. Yeah, and... I, so after I said it, I'm like, uh, I'm an <laughs> idiot. I'm, I'm a redundum. Uh, but uh, Zach Moss, absolutely fantastic in this game. 13 for 60, 3 for 31, and the touchdown. Don't know why he was inactive week one. But he scored two touchdowns last week, uh, had more touches than Singletary this week, so he's the guy. Uh, Manuel Sanders, great with his two scores. We talked about him in the waiver wire uh, last week. Uh, great pickup, uh, and he's still very low rostered. On Washington's side, it was tough to, once again, see a team go away from their main playmaker. I mean, why did Antonio Gibson have one catch for 73 yards and a touchdown? Uh, he got that one in the second quarter. Yep. Why are you not giving him more receptions? Go back to no him. No sense. It's really, really we, dumb to me. We I don't said the same thing. The, we said the same thing the week before. It was like J.D. McKissick's the receiving back. Why? Gibson yeah. was a receiver in college. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, look, uh, J.D. McKissick ha is great at his oh, role. Uh, don't get me wrong. I, I, I don't want to take anything away from him, but you've got to give he's the ball. no Cordero to Patterson, though. 13 times. Why? Why Gibson needs to touch the ball 20 times in, in this offense with a backup quarterback. I just think that is uh, the way for them to go. Terry McLaurin, a little muted four for 62. So over 10 PPR points, I guess, which is nice. But yeah, I mean, uh, not else. Uh, a lot to take away. Josh Allen, obviously in play every single week. He's a stud. Jets at Broncos. Broncos 26 nothing. Bridgewater did his thing. Um, Gordon got some. Javante got some. He fumbled late. Um, Patrick, or we got um, Hamler out with an ACL injury for the season. Patrick was awesome. Sutton was good. Moral of the story is the Jets might be even worse than I could have imagined. They are bad at football. I mean, it is rough. Did you see the 12 year old kid breaking them down? Yes, so oh, good. So <laughs> some good. of the best he, stuff ever. He had a week, week uh, three one also. So oh, I haven't seen that one yet. I gotta check oh, that out. It, it's, it's pretty so good, good too. Uh, so, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it is brutal watching this offense. It is like it, honestly, it's like watching Akron. It's real bad. So, uh, Denver though, like you said, I, I think Teddy Bridgewater leads the league in deep passes yep. so far He's this year, which right is now. not something you would expect from Teddy Bridgewater, you know, but, uh, he is playing, uh, his ass off right now. He's been great. Both these running backs are viable. 
Obviously, with Hamler going down, I think we're going to see more targets for Patrick Sutton yep. and uh, Fant. So I think those are the three guys moving forward. Aquabuna might get uh, involved a little bit more as well, but there is just no one trustable on the Jets. I hope Jameson Crowder gets back soon, but um, because he seems to, it doesn't really matter what crappy quarterback is out there. He gets six catches for 60 yards and maybe gets in the end zone. You know, that's kind of uh, the MO for Crowder, but he's been hurt, so you can't even rely on him. So there is nothing in this offense you can uh, want to buy right now. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty bad. What else is bad is the Dolphins, but they only lost 31 to 28 in overtime. To Beat the, the stupid spread. The Las Vegas Raiders. Yes, they did. Go Dolphins, go just to ruin everything. But um, it's it's ironic. This is what they did with Tua last year. I like, kept the handcuffs on him. Then all of a sudden, when they needed a play, they let Jacoby reset, do Jacoby reset things, and he scored a touchdown, let him do a field goal. All of a sudden, it's like the ball's moving again. It annoys me how they do the things. Raiders like, defense was Raiders yeah. defense was bend it and then break. Not yeah, it bend it, don't break. It was it bend broke. and then break. Yeah. Typical Raiders. But the Ra- in the end, the Raiders win. Car, uh, Car keeps doing his thing. I guess you got to enjoy what they got going at least. The car has twelve hundred passing yards already. I mean, crazy. two of his games gone in overtime, but twelve hundred passing yards is just crazy. And I think you can pick between Edwards, Rugs, and Renfro every week. They uh, they all seem to be viable. Edwards leading in snaps um, did most of his damage in the fourth and overtime with his thirty four yard catch, only three catches, but for eighty nine yards, so uh, pretty good there. Rugs had seven targets, so led them in targets along with Waller. Uh, for four for 78 and then Renfro six for 55, 77, and he got in the end zone. So um, he's been great. I'm concerned about your uh, Dolphins defense here, the rush Ooh, defense yeah. in particular, when uh, Peyton Barber averaged 4.8 yards per carry. I mean, bad. blast Very from the bad. past. Yeah, that Very is bad. not good. So, you know, it might be um, time to key up whoever plays against the Dolphins. I believe they play the Colts this week. So Jonathan Taylor. Jonathan Taylor bounce back week? Should on, yeah. have a nice week yeah. against this front four here. Um, it's messy. Uh, I'll say this looks like uh, Brissett's not going to throw the ball over five yards. Uh, but that if in PPR stuff, Gesicki, one of his favorite targets, yep. 12 13 for Jalen Waddle. Uh, he yep. did take a shot deep at uh, Fuller late, but he did not catch it. So, um, you know, the run game is still a little 13 for Gaskin. Brissett took seven and the goal line carry uh, and Malcolm Brown scored a touchdown too. So it's too chopped up there for me to want to do anything. So I think it's sticking a lot of your guys moving forward in this Dolphins offense until Tua comes back. Gaskin was the main guy. I think he had around 70% of the snaps, but yeah, it's, it's a mess. It's a mess. I don't mind the little waddle call, the Jusecki call Parker, even maybe because it's going to be a lot of short passes. Like you said, so PPR leagues could have some fun. Seahawks Vikings Vikings win 30 to 17 and they are legit folks they could be three and oh right now they're one and two um Kirk Cousins continues to be awesome slinging the ball around Madison filled in beautifully for Cook Jefferson went off Thielen found the end zone again this team's looking really really strong right now and they face the Seahawks team who with with a massive letdown so and Lockett's banged up so keep an eye on that as well yeah uh I mean I think the thing here is you know Seattle's defense is just a matchup you're going to love every single week, you know, unless they're playing the Jets, uh, taking somebody against the Seahawks looks like a pretty decent idea on a week to week basis. They gave up, you know, Dalvin cook couldn't play. So they gave uh, 32 touches to Madison and he paid off for you 112 yards on the ground, 59 yards through the air. He looked great. Jefferson uh, was in everyone who rostered Conklin. You're welcome because I dropped him. Uh, right before this performance. So that is uh, definitely my doing. The link gets in the end zone again. Um, you know, so great. Obviously, Lockett uh, getting banged up is concerning, but should mean more targets for Metcalf. Russell Williams still throwing the ball a bunch. And Carson uh, was good again and got in the end zone. And look, um, seems like they're going to have to at least play point for point with people. So if, uh, you know, if Lockett's a no-go, Freddie Swain has been pretty involved. Uh, We got to see uh, Gerald Everett get a little little more involved as well. So uh, Russell and the passing game is going to play, it seems like, every single week because they're going to have to. Yeah, and Pete Carroll keeps talking about Eskridge in the receiving game, so we'll see how that plays out too. But Yeah, well, uh, Pete be- Carroll doesn't have a bad word to say about anyone on his team. True, so. true. He's chewing his gum and in love and life. Yeah. Um, Tampa Bay, Rams, Buccaneers, Rams, 34-24. Rams looked absolutely amazing. Pure domination in this game. Stafford is legit, like QB1 material here. Uh, Cooper Cup continues to feast. 
People are stressed on Robert Woods, but he's still getting a ton of target share and tons of snaps. I'm not really to give up there. You got Higby, you got Jefferson, DJX went off. Uh, they looked great. Sony Michelle wasn't even half bad. And then on the Buck side of things, Gronk's banged up. You got Godwin doing his thing, but overall, disappointing performance from uh, Captain America Tom Brady. Yeah, I mean, I'm not too worried about the Tampa Bay no, offense. No, not at all. They're going to go know. smoke the Patriots. <laughs> right. Uh, but, uh, you know, Matt Stafford looks just awesome. Him and McVay is a dangerous coupling. And, uh, you know, Deshaun also, I dropped Deshaun, so everyone uh, can enjoy <laughs> that performance. But, uh, you know, I am, I'm starting to get a little worried about Bobby Trees here. You know, only six targets. We saw Van Jefferson with six, Cup with 12. Jackson with five, Higby with five, Sony Michelle got four, and everybody knows he can't catch the ball. So, you know, I mean, with all those targets going around and him only getting six, it's just surprising. I think he's going to be able to get back in, but, um, you know, uh, it, it is starting to worry me. Uh, on it, Look, everyone that wants to jump on the Gio Bernard train, I said this yesterday on ITL as well. I Look, how many times are Tampa Bay going to be down? And he has exactly. he sprained his MCL at the end of the game. So he's day to day right now, but uh, questionable for this week too, which hurts. It really hampers his ability to carve out a role in this offense if he's not going to be able to play. And if he does play, he'd probably be limited. So um, I'm not going to jump on that train immediately. But uh, you know, Brady, uh, they 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 did a great job of splitting Evans and Godwin up, moving them around so they're not both on Ramsey constantly. So. Uh, that was good to see, and they both uh, performed. And Tyler Johnson, a uh, decent effort, too, because Scotty Miller is going to go uh, on the IL, but hopefully A.B. comes back. So um, just a lot of offense here for two of the best offenses in the NFL. Sunday night football, Green Bay Packers, 49ers. Packers went 30-28 to and a walk-off 51-yarder by Mason Crosby himself. It was an absolutely beautiful game. Devontae Adams had 54% of the target share. Rodgers is Rodgers. Uh, lots to like on that side of the ball. And Jimmy Garoppolo, like, they need to go to Lance sooner than later, I, I think, because Garoppolo is just – he's a game manager if you want. That's what you're looking for. Good for you. But uh, I'd be worried if I'm a Niners fan, but maybe I'm just being pessimistic here. I mean, is Alex Smith reborn, you know, which as a Niners fan, uh, I know a lot of you don't want to hear, but um, – I mean, Trey Lance is going to get in there eventually this year. Yeah, he got the Jim, goal line touchdown already. Like, they, they want him in there. That should have been the first play from the goal line, by yeah, the way. Yeah, the fact like, that they waited that long was just silly. Yeah, I get it. Like, it's a rookie quarterback. And no he, timeouts. Just if he, he Yeah, if he it. doesn't get in the end zone, now what are you doing? Because he's panicking and all that stuff. Yeah. But, I mean, uh, it, yeah, there was some cojones to do that with no time left on the clock, and it worked out. Uh, but I think what I pulled away from this game more than anything is that uh, Trey Sermon just did not pull this game away. You know, he had his chance. He did. And, you know, they only gave him 10 carries, but 3.1 yards. Uh, and, and this is against a defense that wasn't getting a lot of push to start the year. So that was extremely disappointing for him. Um, you know, Eli might be out again this week. They're hoping he's going to practice some point soon, but uh, it could be another chance for Sermon. And I think they will go back to him. But, uh, I, I wish we could have seen him do a little more. Uh, Debo has just become one of the best uh, receivers in the NFL. He'll have more production uh, than this 10 for five for 52. Also uh, had a rush uh, in there, a couple rushes in there. Kittle back to being good. Yeah. And on the Packers, I mean, I think really there's not a lot to pull away. MVS number two behind Adams, but number two is not that big in this <laughs> offense. Uh, and AJ Dillon just is not going to get that Jamal Williams role. It is nope. all about Aaron Jones right now. So, uh, you know, I think they're going to start to have AJ Dillon take a bigger role, but there's no way I'm going to count on him until I see it. So, um, for me right now, it's pretty much Rogers, Devontae, and Aaron Jones. And that's all you want to roster. Yep. hundred percent with you on that one. And now we head to Monday night football wrapped up about an hour or so ago. Cowboys take care of business, 41-21. They dominated the game from start to finish. Two defensive scores. Dak looked really good going to uh, – spreading it out well. Zeke looked great in the backfield. as He wasn't really splitting duties like he was the week before with Pollard. It was his role, which looked really good. And then the Eagles, man, I thought the Niners game kind of would have been a fluke, but maybe the Falcons game was a fluke because the Eagles offense struggled. They scored the two touchdowns basically on prevent defense. So I, I don't know. I'm, I'm concerned about this. Cowboys looked great, though. Yeah, and look, uh, I – told people before the season started they like Dalton Schultz and uh, they like him better than Blake Jarwin he had two touchdowns tonight so he was a great play um yeah back to Zeke feed Zeke is 
you know, you love to see it. Uh, so I'm uh, very happy about that. Uh, I'm, I gotta tell you, I'm concerned about Devonte Smith getting, um, receptions here because I mean, uh, Hertz completed 25 passes. He had to throw the ball almost 40 times, 39 times. He did have two picks. One of them was real ugly, a uh, pick six to Trayvon Diggs. Um, but it also means that do you, uh, you watch this game. How many carries do you think Miles Sanders got? If you're not looking at it, I'm looking, I'm going to say like seven or eight, two. Two carries oh, wow. for 27 yards. He had three catches for 28. Yeah. Gainwell had one oh, rush. Catches. <laughs> yeah, Hertz had nine. So that is extremely concerning. They just gotta they gotta reset what they're doing here because it is not working in Philly. And you know, they spread the ball to a bunch of guys, which is you know great if you're Philly, but not good for fantasy. Uh Goddard had four targets. And he led with 66 yards on two catches, seven for Ertz, and he scored a touchdown. So I guess we're back to Ertz. I don't know. Yep. Uh, eight for Rager. He had five for 53. And a lot of it was garbage time, though. A lot of it was and garbage. A lot of it was garbage time. And the pick six was thrown to him. Uh, yeah. Devontae Smith had six targets, but only came down with three for 28. Um, you know, it is ugly in Philly right now. So it, it seems like Hertz and then a dart throw on the receivers. That's all you can do right now. Yep, not pretty at all, but we'll see what happens in week four with your guys' picks and bets later this week and the week four DFS preview. Before we head on out here, I want to remind you guys once again, Thrive Fantasy, sponsor of the show. Go check out Thrive Fantasy on Thrive.com or ThriveFantasy.com or download the app. When you create your account, use promo code LINESTAR for a first-time deposit match up to now $250 instead of $100. And instead of two months of LineStar premium, you get three. And last but not least, you get a... Um, a free ticket to their 50 K tournament this week, week four. Let's talk some waiver wire folks. Let's talk about uh, some of the top quarterback options. Let's go. Let's say below 50% on Yahoo or whatever sites you have up there. Bogman. Uh, I'm still a big Danny dimes fan. I'm I'm a big fan of what he has to do. And Teddy B and Sam Darnold are pretty, pretty affordable. I think they're both, uh, both in play going forward. Yeah. uh, I'll tell you what. uh, I don't like Danny dimes against new Orleans this week. We just saw what they did to Mac. So don't really want to mess with him. Today, Bridgewater's got a tougher one against Baltimore. Uh, They haven't been as good as uh, advertised, but they've still been okay. Look, Sam Darnold against Dallas. I think they're going to have to play point for point with Dallas. So I think that's a decent one. He's 21% rostered. And um, Taylor Heineke against Atlanta. And knowing he ran one in, too, that could be at least a good DFS play for sure. Uh, so I kind of like those guys and look, Roethlisberger, look, he sucks. I'm not going to sit here and say that he doesn't, but 31% rostered and they should be getting uh, drummed soundly by the Packers. So he should have a lot of, uh, pass attempts. Yeah. Potentially a lot of pass attempts for, I like that Heineke call. Cause especially when I like a guy that can use his legs as well. Um, I wanted to see, uh, no, I'm not going up with that one. I was looking at Jared Goff, but going up against the bears, I'll pass on that one. Cause he's actually, to me, Goff's look better than he can, especially in games where they have to throw from behind. I mean, and those tight ends or excuse me, running backs are getting most of the receptions there. True. So, you know, the drop offs doesn't matter who catches it as long as someone is. Let's talk the running back position here and talk 50% or less. And, uh, you know, you got J.D. McKissick there, if you believe that situation continues, which why wouldn't you at this point in time, Bogman? And then you mentioned Chub- Chuba Hubbard is 26% owned. He's going to be very popular. How much, if you had $100 in fab, how much would you throw out there on Chuba? I, I mean, if I'm the CMC owner, probably like 50 oh, bucks, you know. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I think maybe 25% uh, percent of whatever your fab you have left is, uh, if you want to try to grab Chuba, you know, he definitely has an expiration date because it's not going to it's it's not going to be the whole year. I mean, it might get up to six weeks or something with CMC, but he definitely has an expiration date because we thought they weren't going to run CMC a bunch when he came back last year. And then he played two games and got hurt again yep. because it can't go away from him because he's so by far the best player on their team. He'd be the best player on most teams. So uh, but uh, I, I think I would spend a little bit on Chuba, but I wouldn't uh, blow my number one waiver priority on him. I don't think. And then, like we mentioned, Ramondre Stevenson, possibly J.J. Taylor might be the better play for now, unless we see some roster moves. Any other running back standing out to you this week? I mean, Peyton Barber had a huge role. They're playing uh, the Chargers this week, so uh, they did just give up 100 yards to CEH, so uh, Barber might be in play as well. Yep, and I guess Cordero Patterson probably could be too. Um, (laughs) Wide receiver position, there's going to be a lot of options here because it's a much deeper position, like Devontae Parker is still there, if you believe that. 
Curtis Samuel should be coming back this week. Something to keep in mind if you're looking for a PPR play. Uh, we mentioned Manny Sanders. He's still 26% owned. Boggs went on that. You got Tim Patrick at 23. I think we mentioned him every week. And now with Hamler going down, that's another big push there. What uh, what wide receivers are you looking at? I mean, you mentioned most of them. Sanders and, I mean, the Curtis Samuel call is so great. Uh, people forget he's eligible to come off the IR. doesn't mean he will, True. but he can. Um, so just look for him in practice this week. Uh, Renfro, I think, needs to be on that list, as is Brian Edwards. Um I think I still like Quintez Cephas in yeah. a deeper league uh, for uh, ten- uh, Tennessee, for um, uh, Detroit, but it's kind of questionable. A.J. Green has had a role for Arizona, as annoying as that is. Uh, and like you said, Tim Patrick in a really deep league, uh, Nick Westbrook should Brown miss a, a decent amount of time. Yeah, a couple others like that I at least keep on your watch list. Like I'm a big fan of what Terrace Marshall is doing in Carolina. He's got a role there too, yeah, somewhere to AJ Green. I think that's one you got to keep an eye on because we saw um, Moore get banged up last week and he started peppering Marshall until Moore came back in. Uh, if you're in super deep leagues, I think you at least have to respect what Van Jefferson's doing out there. Yeah, like, yeah. That, that's when you got to keep Not an even eye that as deep. Well. You know, 14. Uh, and explosive some, offense. And some deeper bench 12s. Yeah. Yeah. And then you mentioned um, the, the Giants receivers as well. Tony and um, Johnson could be some deeper league ones to. Keep an eye on. So at least at least get your watch list going on some of these wide receivers because it's literally one more injury away from potential target madness. So enjoy some of that. Uh, tight end position as we wrap up the waiver wire segment for the week. Uh, below 50%. You mentioned Hooper might be the guy. Evan Ingram is back. We know how much he usually is the guy there. Zach Ertz looked good. Uh, who are you looking at at this position? I mean, Conklin looked real yeah, good. I love Conklin. Yeah, good he's call. 4% rostered or somewhere in that neighborhood. Uh, Dawson Knox caught a touchdown. From uh, Josh Allen, Pat Freermuth, uh, especially if Juju and Deontay are down this week, should have an expanded role in that receiving game. And uh, Tommy Tremble, you know, just because they're going to use him in weird run formations, seems like they're going to throw the ball to him now that Dan Arnold is gone. So he should take a bigger role in Carolina pretty quickly uh, here. So uh, those are the guys I like. I like the, the the Conklin call for sure. I've been rostering him in DFS almost weekly now. Uh, Schultz is three percent. You like you're talking about him. He's a, he's an interesting yeah. one as well. So lots of options on the tight end wire, and then the wide receivers obviously deep as well. Is is Chuba definitely the one hundred percent the one guy you want to try to get this week? He's the one guy, but I still don't know if I'm going to blow uh, like a number yeah. one seed on him. I, it's pretty close. I mean, if I need a running back, obviously, then go get him. You know, just take a fill in for now. Uh, but um, other than that, yeah, there's not a lot to uh, blow your stack on here. All right, everybody. That'll wrap us up for your week three recap and waiver wire segment heading into week four. We'll be back with you guys on Thursday with the bets and picks for the week four action and Friday with your your week four main slate preview. Remember to check us out on the Lion Star YouTube channel. Subscribe, give the old thumbs up, leave a comment. Let us know what you think about the show. If you just like to listen to us, leave a rating and review on iTunes. It would help us out a ton as well. But uh, good luck, everybody. Check out Bogman on Twitter at Bogman Sports. I'm at Pediatric, and we'll catch you guys next time. See ya. Thanks for listening to Pre-Snap Podcast, presented by Drive Fantasy. Please like, comment, subscribe, and rate for good karma in your fantasy football games.